A red-hot labor market has put job seekers in the driver's seat, but that trend could be shifting. Last month saw a 28% decline in U.S. hiring compared to one year ago, with one job opening for every two applicants, a sign that some slack is returning to the labor market. That's all according to LinkedIn's new State of the Labor Market report that breaks down the changes in employment in America. Joining us now, Chief Economist for LinkedIn, Karen Kimbrough. It's great to have you. So we're looking at three key workforce trends to look at. I want to get to the second real quick. But first, um, job seeker searching intensifies. These numbers are moving around a little bit. That's right. So job seekers are now um, coming back to the platform with great energy. They're starting to actually um, apply to more jobs than before. So we've seen a 35% increase mm -hmm. in the number of roles that they apply to anytime they come to our platform. So job seeking is intensifying. We're seeing people kind of more committed to the labor market than they were before. And that is because for the last couple of years, they just have sort of felt like, I've got all these options. Let me sit back and see what I can do. And now it's tightening up a little I bit. I think they were a little casual. And they're yeah. getting a little bit more intentional about their job seeking efforts. And I think as when we survey our own members, what we see is the workforce confidence is actually starting to really bottom out. So they are not feeling as good about their ability to find and hold a job. So a lot more intention in the work, see, work um, mm -hmm. seeking behavior. And then also we're seeing a lot of workers who are still being a little bit picky, though. You mm -hmm. still have opportunities. Ah, so let's get to that. Yeah. Uh, remote work tensions on the rise. And this is the push pull about remote work, whether or not it's a good thing. People a lot of people don't want to come in. Um, bottom line, we're seeing that, uh, you know, in our company, um, companies across America. Um, I've sort of had a shift in thinking about it, but um, tell us about these tensions, what you're seeing first. What we're finding is that, you know, go back a year ago, remote work was the bomb. Everybody yeah. wanted to work from home. Nobody wanted to commute in. <clears throat> and so we had like 20% of the jobs on our platform were remote roles. Now that's over. Um, mm -hmm. We're down to closer to 10% of the roles are remote, seeing a lot of companies pulling back on availability. Here's the kicker though, workers love remote. They do. When they come on our platform, 50% of the applications for roles go to remote jobs, even though there's only 20% of the jobs mm -hmm. are remote. Mm -hmm. So people love remote. <laughs> yeah. is, there, is there a hybrid option here? Are you seeing that where people, employers are offering, like maybe come in for a few days and then be remote the others? Is that great? That's speed? exactly it. So what we're seeing is um, remote shifting back and what's taking its place is the hybrid, the three days in, two days at home. Mm -hmm. um, the full-time job, five days in the office, that's kind of flatlining. We're not seeing a lot of momentum there. The employers want it, but the workers don't. Yeah, Caddy Kay, this is so interesting because of course the worry is with um, you know people going all full out remote is that lack of connection, especially for younger workers, for mentoring, for that sort of creative, if depending on the company, cr creative buzz that's created by being together, and at the same time. Uh, the options for women especially open up exponentially when you have the option of remote work. And I got to tell you, when I was starting out and, you know, had a two hour commute working overnights, remote work would have changed everything for me and for the early years of bringing up my children. Same. Yeah. Sorry to jump yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Right ahead. totally. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, years. if I, we spent years, didn't we, as working yeah. mothers begging our employers to let us work from home one day a week and being treated like we were sort of pariahs or skivers who were going to just sit at home and watch videos on the sofa. Well, I think I, mean, I think that stigma has gone, thank God, and COVID precipitated it. And it's interesting to see that actually even in office work is really only three days a week. I mean, that that. Five, if somebody had said to me five years ago that working in the office was going to mean working in the office only three days a week, I would have said they were just, you know, smoking something because that <laughs> seemed impossible. But but I wonder what, what it does for women too, though, if women are working from home more and they are the ones that want remote work the most, but men are going back into the office, doesn't that produce some mm. lack of opportunities for women? That worries me a bit. That it's the men, and that's it's what the numbers true. are showing us. I don't know if you find this too, Kimberly, that the numbers are showing that men are going back to work, but women tend to be the ones staying home. That I think can produce a penalty for women. So I think I think employers are just going to have to be super intentional, super intentional, Karen, about how they figure this out. And are you seeing them do that? 
Mm -hmm. We absolutely do see that. I would say that the number one thing we're noticing is that, well, everybody likes the flexibility of remote work or hybrid work, but women in particular are more likely to apply for it. Black women and Latina women are even more likely to apply for it, and we've seen an increase in their participation in the labor force when they're offered remote work. Do, do you see any difference in younger workers? Maybe do. Uh, looking yes. for full-time work in the office or... Yes. And, and do you have you looked at any numbers of any salary numbers associated with these jobs? Like, what's the differential between um, jobs that are remote? Um, is there a pay differential and, and ones that are right? So we fully don't. Person? We're not seeing the salary numbers. That's not something our data particularly okay. speaks to well. But what we do see is generational cuts. And so by generation, we're seeing younger workers who absolutely prefer to come in. They want the connections. They want the coaching. They may not want to be in their smaller apartments or homes with their parents or whatever it is. So they like to come in. It's the older millennials and younger Gen X who have kids at home and orthodontist appointments and soccer yeah. games who want to work from home. Yeah, yeah. The, the, as you know, the employment climate, I guess a couple of summers ago, was help wanted signs everywhere. In the service industry, mm -hmm. I remember being out to dinner one time with my teenage daughter, and they're saying, how old are you? Do you want to work? <laughs> she, was, she was very we'll young, and they didn't, they didn't seem to mind <laughs> exactly. how young she was because they were so desperate. Has that changed now? Are those jobs starting to be filled? I think what we're seeing is it's starting to depend on the industry. So there are certain industries that are still hot, still looking for workers. Um, think about a lot parts of retail, um, a lot of the service sector. Healthcare is still hiring uh, on a tear. And then there are other sectors that have pulled back and are not really hiring. I'm not sure they're going to hire your, your teenager, <laughs> but uh, financial services, mm -hmm. professional services, right. tech, these are all ones that are clearly you know, on the back foot in terms of the pace of hiring. So interesting. I think we need to have more conversations about the remote work tension because that's, uh, that's really dynamic. Uh, LinkedIn Chief Economist Karen Kimbrough, thank you for coming in. Thanks, Good Karen. to see you. Thank you.